a little bit about James Joyce's Ulysses. Has anybody read it in the room? Is anybody? Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, my man. Okay. Thank you, Nora Barnacle, uh, for your voice in Ulysses and for giving us Bloomsday. I trained as a painter and I looked at many paintings. They were all images on surfaces, on linen fabrics. And it seemed to me that images hid as much as they revealed. Cloth itself is laden with so many references, and it holds the marks and the gestures of the everyday and shapes. I treated paper as something to be woven rather than drawn on. Chance. James Joyce once said, furnishes me with what I need. I am like a man who stumbles about, my foot strikes something, I bend over, and it's exactly what I want. And that's how he met Nora Barnacle, and that's what made Bloomsday. I then began to work with history and to invite it into my fabrics and to reintroduce paint touches. I started to look at my own history and the landscapes that I had grown up with in Ireland. I began to understand how much we embody history in its entirety and how we have our own internal landscapes. Some of the landscapes look like this, very beautiful, wild and full of life and mischief. This is a bogland landscape from County Longford in the Midlands in Ireland. I began to understand the context of nationality and how it affects the landscapes around us. I began to look at the Irish famine. I began to understand the weight of history through my own body and through going back to visit the first road that I ever walked on out of a small village in Ireland. History did start to become a nightmare, which is something James Joyce decided to. I began to see a distance, at a distance how radically we change our world and we can erase truth or embrace it. I began to see it in the landscape that was so familiar that I grew up with. And I began to see it in myself and in my family and in the Irish community and in behavior and in attitudes and in being. I began to see it through traveling from one country to another. I began to understand this is my body. I began to understand that this is my world. I began to understand that I am nature. And then I began to fear the truth about my body, about nature, and about our world. And I began to shrink and to flee and to not know what to do. And I began to worry and to fret and to cry and to hope alone. And then I began to read Ulysses. And thank you, Nora Barnacle, for your voice in Ulysses. Because then I began to use my body to see. And I began to see my body in the picture and I began to give myself space again. And I loved reading Ulysses because in it I found the deep feminine and it gave me courage. And I began to question and to reflect. Thank you, Nora Barnacle Joyce, for walking down Nassau Street on the 16th of June, 1904, and for saying yes to James Joyce. And thank you for meeting James Joyce. And thank you for falling in love with him and for being the voice in his work, for giving him the voice that he did not have before. He was always a genius, but he didn't have the deep feminine in his work. Thank you, Nora, for your two children, for being a mother. Thank you for staying with James Joyce and for writing to him letters that are now regarded as dirty. Thank you, Nora, for your honesty and understanding that would help so many of us to reach our truth. You put love into the world in Ulysses. Ulysses is first and foremost a love story. And the 16th of June, 1904, is the day that they first met and went out together. Thank you, Nora, for daring greatly. Thank you for leaving Galway without as much as a goodbye and for stepping out of your and into your power and rewriting history of your own. These things helped me to put myself back in to my picture as a different element in my work and to use my body and its fluidity as part of a new aesthetic. It helped me to set up a reading group in Hastings so that the work of James Joyce and your voice could be heard by more and more people. There are many other women too in James Joyce's famous Ulysses, most notably this wonderful brave woman called Sylvia Beach, 
who actually was the first woman that published the work in the first place, when nobody else would touch it with a barge pole because it was so full of obscenities, and Harriet Weaver, who actually was his patron for many years. And here we are in 2017 on Bloomsday, on the beach in St. Leonard's, reading Ulysses with Michael Punter, who's a, yoko, a local um, playwright, and we're also drawing in the background as well. So still on the beach in Hastings, Ulysses gave me ways at looking at ourselves creatively and exploring our world with a deep feminine voice. That's not just for women, it's for all of us. And Nora, I also want to say, I'm sorry that you had to bear watching your only daughter suffer with mental illness. This is Lucia Joyce. She was a wonderful, talented dancer, and she's almost been eradicated out of the history books because she had what we now understand was probably bipolar. And Nora, I will never judge you as a mother. It must have been horribly painful. So gender fluidity and equality is what our young people aspire to today, for every day and for all humanity. And Ulysses is a good place to start because that's where a lot of this thinking began. And that's why I'm so grateful for the story that put the deep feminine back into the voice of Joyce. And this is my moment of gratitude to Nora Barnacle for Ulysses and for daring greatly and for changing the script for James Joyce and for all of us. <laughs>